Marvellous, it's time for another video where we go over someone's knackered old broadcast quality monitor. This one is a JVC something or other, and it's come to me with some odd strange faults, which are, uh, they come and go, they're not, uh, they're not always there, so it's kind of pointing towards cold joints really, isn't it? If something works but then doesn't work but then works, uh, we're looking at potentially cold solder joints or a partial short. So I think I've got a video of what the fault was before it arrived to me, so I'll splice that into the video now. But apparently it was um, not displaying a picture properly or it was arcing or something was going on or whatever. So we're going to power it on, see what's up, take the old back off. And with these JVC Panasonic type monitors, I have to get the model number. Uh, so you have the main board and then sometimes you have like upright boards or something like that. But let's power it on first. Um, and then uh, take the back off and we can see what's up. In this video, also, I'm going to be making use of this. It's a Tektronics oscilloscope, which I've recently serviced and repaired for a fellow customer. It's fully working. Wonderful. So for anyone playing along at home, it's a JVC model TM1500PS. It's apparently 68 watts. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, so, wonderful. Got some sort of tip ring jack type plugs a b remote marvelous 16 by 9 remote is that original that looks quite interesting and what so you short the contacts and it changes the thing into 16 by 9 i might have to test that we've got some weird din plug for our uh, s video standard composite monitor I suspect something like this could be modded with RGB. If someone paid me enough, I think I might happily be able to do it. Setup, okay, automatic frequency control. Input V, VTR, I don't know if there's enough pins on that to have that being an RGB thing. I think this is only a standard composite and S-video type or YC input monitor. Mm. Interesting. Okay, let's power it on then and see what's up. Let's make sure that's on. Oh, little speaker. It's so cute. Let's get the power on now. You can see me in the reflection. Hello. Oh, and we're going to have to readjust. 25 frames per second. Look at that. Right. Oh, marvellous. Okay picture looks all right it's coming up coming out a bit slightly blue on the camera i'm gonna see if i can turn off these lights yeah that looks a bit more as it is in person it's actually a very rich color um an underscan picture i don't know if there's an underscan button well there is but it seems to switch the thing into 16 by 9 i'm not too sure why that does that interesting See, this is our contrast, is it? I think this is our contrast. Colour. And we've got our V-hold. Right. So, I'm going to readjust the picture, obviously. But, um... I think we have to take the back off and touch up all of these joints. But before that, I really want to have a look at what this 16 by nine plug thing is. So I'm going to find myself a jack plug and see if it's just as simple as shorting out the pin. Actually, I'm not going to do that now. Right, well, here's our picture. 
It looks pretty good to be fair. For some reason it's under scanned. Got a good black level. Uh, lots of colour, lots of colour, really good. Um, good tube, I'm not going to bother checking this one. Got some pin cushion on the side. Suppose we could put a cross hatch on and see what's uh, what's going on. That could be because the, the picture is, well, compressed. I don't know why, you know, people want to do this underscan crap. Look at that. I mean, it's pretty sharp. The camera's not doing a very good job at picking up that sharpness. The next step really is to take the back off and see what we see what we have to work with. I think at first what I'm going to do is adjust the vertical and horizontal just, you know, out. Um, and then I'm going to touch up these joints. I'm going to check that power supply as well. I've got the tech scope here, which I've repaired for a customer. I've done a lovely calibration on it, giving it a bit of a clean. And I'll show you how to measure DC waveforms as well. So that'd be quite interesting. Right, well, here's a quick word about removing screws. Put them away, you know, don't lose the screws. I find it unbelievably frustrating when people cannot either put the proper screws back where they came from or wouldn't put any screws back where they're supposed to be. You know, it's not that hard. You get your screwdriver, this is a Phillips, you stick it in the hole and you turn it like this. You unscrew it to the point where it's about to fall out. Turn, 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 and eventually it's going to come loose. And then when it does come loose, you put it away. Now, thankfully with these, they use all the same size screws. So you just have to pop them in your little tray, which I, I just take a spare little tray thing, component drawer, and I just put it there, put all the screws in, and then I pop it down. And they stay there, and sometimes I put them away, and sometimes I label stuff if I have to come back to them later. So for example, this is a taxan I've been working on for about a hundred years. I don't understand what the difficulty is. People really struggle with putting screws back on. I mean, I absolutely love this because it even means someone professionally has worked on it because they've put all the original screws back or it's just not been touched. You can kind of tell when someone works on something um, or if, so if something has been touched before simply just by how tight the screws are. It's just something I wanted to say. Yeah, so keep your screws all together and remember where they go because they're not always going to be the same size. Well, someone has been in this before because uh, there were some screws missing, which is just perfect, really. And if we look at the bottom of that line transformer, looks like someone's tried to touch up those joints. Oh no, I wonder if someone's changed the line transformer. I mean, it's not bad, but you know, people do crap jobs. What the hell's that? Is that all like dry flux or something? Let's just take a look at what's going on. We've got an interstage transformer of some sort. Hmm. Here we are, look, vertical heights, linearity, normal vertical heights, I don't know what that means. Got a, any horizontal um, width coils probably going to be on the opposite side of the board actually wouldn't it right well I'm gonna I think the first thing to do is sort out whatever has happened to this poor picture and well from there what I'll do is I'll adjust the vertical height and the width um, and then we can go from there really well, I can't find my special precision tools, those very small sort of RF tuning plastic tools. So I'm going to have to stick my hands down in there, which isn't much of a big deal. Right, so let's figure out Wagwan. So we need to adjust one of those thingies down in there. So I'm going to go and get my screwdriver and let's start twiddling. Well, that was easy. Are we completely linear? I think we are. 
Um, we just need to adjust the whip valve a bit and potentially change the H position. Oh. There we are, look, getting a bit closer now. Let's just turn this silly light off. Getting a bit closer, just got to sort out, I think, the centering just a little bit. Just kind of scooch that over. And I think we should be, uh, we should be there. So that the um, coil on the left, that's our whip coil. Piss about with that for a bit. That's brought the picture out. We've adjusted the uh, vertical height. Uh, yeah, man. Amazing. Right, so I'm just about to measure the main HT rail. I'm just on the test point. There it is marked on the board. I think that's what, test point E or something? I can't see what that says. This is our main HT rail. It's about 100, 112, 115 volts. There we are. And you know, you can uh, switch to AC. And if we adjust the range, give us a, f if there's any form of AC on the, Thing, we'll be able to see it but the the meter isn't picking up any so let's try and measure the uh, main HT rail now with the oscilloscope and just like that you can measure your main HT rail oh, it's boiling hot right just one more segment and that's me putting the thing back together and sharing my thoughts Marvellous. Well, here's the set all done. As you can see, it produces a really nice picture. I've stretched out the width a bit. Other than that, you know, it's all right. Convergence looks really good. Grayscale, perfect. You know. I actually did end up adjusting the uh, HT preset as well. I just brought this a bit down. Um, it's a common thing that I'm doing at the moment. It's to keep these old broadcast bits of kit from running extra hot. The tube is unbelievably good in it, so it doesn't need to run at the full HT. Um, there isn't any issues with sync or anything. Um, it's pretty well locked in there. So, I mean, with that being said, I'm pretty happy with this. And it's ready to go back to its rightful owner. Cheers. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Take care.